2016. The best one. Absolutely the best one. As a player myself, I, I expected myself to win the of this one. And I, I, you know, of course, winning the first Premier League was incredible. Winning the year before we won the European Championships with Denmark. Then we won the treble in my last year for, for Manchester United. All that was incredible, just to be part of that. But I could do something about it. I was in those games. So for me, it was just, without sounding arrogant, it was just something I thought I had to do. But when your offspring is lifting the Premier League trophy and you're living every moment of that season with, uh, with the eyes of a fan, and not being able to do anything about it. When that was one eventually, that was for me one of the biggest moments of my life and one of my proudest moments. How you managed to get that, you know, being at the team but having so many star players at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it really is it's something I, I actually go into a great detail about that in the book and of course it will take too long to go into all that details so please buy the book and then you know read this chapter about this but it's interesting if you're interested in leadership I think that is really interesting because what he was looking for uh, and he from the very very first day in uh, November 86 I think it was when he stepped through the doors of Old Trafford he deliberately looked for people with big personalities strong people who would deal with adversity in a split second, uh, but also could deal with the pressure of being a Manchester United player because he saw at the time Manchester United was not what Manchester United is today. But he was he envisioned what it would be in I think quicker than it happened, but what it would be in certain you know a number of years. The biggest club on the planet with the biggest pressure, with the biggest influence on you know normal people's lives everyday life, the result that he was producing with the team would have an influence on how the week would be for Manchester United fans around the globe. So that's a lot of pressure. So he was looking for guys who would be be able to deal with that. Um, and I know from, because he's, he's, he's told me a lot about how he was scouting me. So he got to know about me. Um, he sent his goalkeeping coach out to watch me. He came back straight away and said, sign this guy, and he was interested. But then he scouted me for another 15 times, or 13 times, but a, a lot of times after that, because he, he wanted to be absolutely sure about the personality. He wanted to see how I was dealing with, for instance, losing a game or being behind in a game. Um, and I think that's how he scouted players. The personality was very important to him. And then once he brought them into the squad, he would not. He would then manage everything because he, he'd then get an enormous amount of knowledge about this person and his personality. He would then manage that that person individually to how he would then get the most out of that person. So I know I had a hundred percent freedom. I, he trusted me a hundred percent. I could. So, examples is after international, back then we played international matches on Wednesdays. Back then, I just came in on Fridays. So he knew that for me it was best to stay back in Denmark, you know, spend some time with the, my family, travel back Thursday night, come into training Friday. That, that doesn't happen today. They want the players back straight away because they don't, probably don't trust them enough. But I was trusted 100%. And so I know that a lot of my teammates were as well. But I also know some players weren't. So they had to come back on Thursdays, for instance. That's just one little tiny example. Um, but I think that is a genius of Sir Alex Ferguson. He's done complete due diligence of every player that he gets into his squad. He knows the family names of all family members. I won't say he knows their birthdays, but he just knows people. I, I, have, I have this great example about how uh, he so he's got he's got an old trap he's still got a little lounge and, and um, after a game when I'm at old trap I always knock on the door and uh, you know I asked him uh, you know are you, oh come in he always goes come in and this one day um, I didn't go in he said no no I've got I've got some friends here one of them is he was a commentator for Danish TV and he the co-commentator was a former player called Brett Melchior Larsen who played in Italy 
probably the best striker we ever had in Denmark. And a very cocky guy, and he didn't want to go past Ferguson's lounge because he said, no, he probably doesn't know me, you know? So I said, no, I'm not going, come on, got, got some friends. And he came, came out, said hello to this commentator, and he looked at Brett Milk and said, ah, oh, Brett, how are you? Oh, that goal you scored against us in 86, in the World Cup in Mexico, Fergie was the manager of, of Scotland. And Premier scored for Denmark. We won one. It was so lucky. I mean, it was a Premier. It's like, how did even go? And then he goes on. But the goal you scored for Verona, where you lost your boots, that was incredible. And Premier actually scored a goal. He lost his boot, and he scored a goal with his sock, which is unreal, unusual. But that's Ferguson, vintage Ferguson. Once, you, once you sort of you've been on his radar, he knows you, and he remembers you. And I, I, I got tons of examples. And I think that is his genius. He knows people, and he knows how to deal with those people. Because, you know, he's, he's done all that work. We have a question coming in.